This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and oh my god, it's finally here. It's the BlackBerry Z10. This is the AT&T version. How can we tell? Well, little AT&T logo here, other than that, very subtle. We also have the Unlock version on hand, too, the, the import model. But honestly, they're just about the same. A little software difference is that's it. At any rate, we're going to look at the first brand new BlackBerry in years right now. So finally, it's here, the BlackBerry Z10 for U.S. carriers. We're looking at the AT&T version, going to be out on March 22nd, 2013. And this one right over here is the unlocked import version. Uh, really, there's just about no difference. A couple of preloaded AT&T apps, and whether or not you see this little AT&T logo right on the bottom here. Very faint, very tasteful, we're not complaining at all. Nice BlackBerry logo there that we're used to seeing. 8 megapixel camera with LED flash right here. Nice looking phone, especially from the front view. Very clean looking. Yes, it does look a little like the iPhone 5, but I'm sure this was in development at the same time, if not before the iPhone 5, so we're not going to say they're copycats, just great minds might think alike. Also, the, the new HTC One has a similar design. Big glass plate right here, metal on the top and the bottom. 4.2 inch IPS display, very high pixel density, a 356 ppi pixel density, just as sharp as the iPhone 5, which is one of the best displays. Also lovely compared to the HTC One X, which is one of our favorite displays on a smartphone. The resolution is 1280 by 768, so it can hold its own with the big boys, the other high-end smartphones. Sure, there's a couple of 1080p phones coming out right now, but at 4.2 inches, that's plenty enough resolution and obviously very high pixel density. We have our 2 megapixel front camera here behind the glass. Earpiece right here, we have an ambient light sensor. Very weird thing BlackBerry did with this phone. You can set the brightness under settings, but you cannot turn the ambient light sensor on and off yourself. Uh, why? God only knows. It's a little bit annoying, but there it is. That said, it, it adjusts very well on outdoors. It's very viewable, even in bright sunlight, which is nice. Again, just like the iPhone 5, no problem seeing it outdoors. Clean design, modern, minimalist. Right here we have a place where you can grab to take off the back. Yes, the back is removable. That's a nice thing to see on a slim, modern phone. And this is the speaker grill right here, or the speaker vent hole, shall we say. Side right here we have our micro USB and micro HDMI ports. Metal on the sides too. Power buttons up top. There's a microphone right there. Your 3.5 millimeter audio jack is over here. And then we've got stainless steel volume controls. And the center one, if you press and hold it, you can use that for play, pause, for multimedia. But if you press and hold it when you're not doing media playback, you can bring up voice command, which works eh, not so great in our tests. The back is a sort of rubbery plastic. It looks pretty nice. It's not as high class looking as the front of the phone, but it integrates well. Nice curves on the side. Feels good in the hand. It's a nice size. Again, sort of like the iPhone 5. It's just not really very huge. And the squared off sides make it easy to hold on to. And if we rip open the back, there's our back right there. And there's our long, narrow battery, 1800 milliamps, removable and swappable, obviously, important for a business phone. There's our micro SD card slot. We have a 32 gig card in here. 32 gigs is the maximum. And there's the micro SIM card slot. This is an AT&T phone with LTE 4G. The phone ships with what is currently the latest and greatest BlackBerry 10 OS that's available. It's the same one that you would get if you had the Canadian version or the international version. It's an over-the-air update, which we're still trying to get onto our unlocked phone. So far, we've been having trouble with that taking a long time to install. But AT&T version, pre-installed. We have quick launch buttons here for universal search. We have quick access to the camera and to the phone right here. And you can see the UI here is very different from what you're used to on older BlackBerry models. Obviously, full touch screen right here, multi-touch, so that part's different right there. But you can see little icons down here. And first one indicates this is your message hub right here, which we'll take a look at in greater detail in a minute. Unifies all sorts of messaging, updates, all that sort of stuff. This view right here is your Card view for your active windows. These are running applications. You can tap on any of these to make them bigger. A lot like the Playbook OS. So if you've, if you've used the Playbook, this will look familiar. Also, if you've used WebOS, it will look quite familiar. And these other little dots here indicate your palettes of icons. And you can swipe around. This is heavily gesture-based. That means when you first turn it on and you look at it, you're going to probably wonder, how do I get from here to there? It's all swiping left and right, up and down. And again, just like the Playbook and like WebOS, if you want to minimize something, you swipe up and it becomes a little active window over here. And if you swipe all the way, you can get to one of my favorite features, which is the BlackBerry Hub right here. This, this really has the spirit of the older BlackBerry operating system with all sorts of notifications and information that you need 
all in one place. I got my Twitter notifications over here, and these are threaded, by the way, so in case you can't remember what you were saying back and forth, you can see your responses, their responses along the way. Also supports Facebook. Your mail notifications are in here with the little yellow envelopes, as you can see, so you have the appropriate icons to spot them, and your calendar entries are in here too. And if you tap on this, you can just look at things individually. Now notice I have my Gmail account set up right here and if I tap on that I can get to my inbox and all the stuff is in my Gmail account. That's very important because as we take a look here there's no email application, no dedicated little email app. If you want to get to your email you're going to get to it through the hub. That's kind of disconcerting, right? Text messages here looks like your normal text message app. That one's not so unusual or freaky. And we have BBM as its own little dedicated interface as well on this. So pretty much it's just going to be email that feels a little bit weird to get used to not having separate little inbox icons right here. What's on here is mostly what comes preloaded on the device. And the same thing is true of the unlock device. We've got Twitter, we've got Facebook, we've got LinkedIn, we've got Foursquare on here. BBM, of course, is on here as well. So it's set up to be very connected. We have Box on here and Dropbox is here ready for you to set up to access files and that works very nicely on the device. Since this is the AT&T version, we have AT&T Family Map, My AT&T, which is just really a shortcut to the, the website portal so you can access your account information and AT&T Device Help, which again is just a web-based, here's some information about your phone. Other than that, there's really not much here from AT&T at all. I've loaded Flixster, I've loaded WhatsApp on here, everything else is what came with the phone. So as you can see we have Adobe Reader on here, we have the initial setup application which you can access again at any time, our camera apps on board. We have a weather application, we have Blackberry Maps, we'll take a look at that in detail in a bit. There's YouTube right here. By the way, this supports Adobe Flash. Now in the web browser, Flash is turned off by default, we'll show you the web browser too so you can look at settings, but this is one of the few mobile platforms that still supports Flash. We've got newsstand right here, voice command, mm, not so good. In fact, we'll try that right now. We're going to press and hold. What's my next appointment? Do you want to search the internet for when is my next appointment? No, thanks. Open calendar. What would you like to do? Open calendar. calendar. You can also use this to call folks, stuff like that. So while we're at it, here's what the calendar looks like. This is the day view. We have week, we have month. You can search your calendar. Hey, that's a great thing. Nice to be able to search your calendar. Some operating systems have forgotten about that feature. And you can add new appointments. Now you can sync, of course, with Exchange. This does support BES 10. There is no more BIS, BlackBerry Information Service, for server rather for BlackBerry OS 10 devices. You can sync to Google as well. This supports Card Dave and Cal Dave, and I'll use that for syncing calendar and contacts. Our month view looks like that, just so you can see. And then we have appointments and holidays marked. Appointments are teeny little dots, and our holidays are the bigger bars right here. One important thing to note about Google, I know there's been some brouhaha and people have been arguing about whether or not this supports push email from Google. The answer is, if you just have a regular personal account, February 1st and after, no. But that's because Google removed Exchange ActiveSync support. That is what BlackBerry uses to connect to Google for Gmail. So by default, instead, it will set it up as IMAP. Now, even with IMAP and IMAP idle going on, the shortest check interval you can set is every 15 minutes. And I did test this. I sent to my Gmail account and I had several devices all lined up, my iPhone, my Android device. Those got messages immediately. This one, well, you know, within five to 10 minutes was the quickest I ever saw pick up that email message. If you have a Google Apps business account, that's five bucks a month per user, then they keep Exchange ActiveSync alive, so you're good and you can still use that for actual true push email on this device. It's not BlackBerry's fault so much as Google decided to end support for Exchange ActiveSync, and just like Microsoft, they're going to have to find new ways of connecting to Google service. While we're talking about email, this supports IMAP, this supports POP3. Uh, for a lot of accounts, you're probably going to use IMAP to get as close to a sense of a push feeling as you can. And of course, it's going to get pushed with Exchange and with BlackBerry BES 10. When new emails come in, when other things happen, you'll hear a little sound. You can configure that sound and it's going to flash a little red LED here so you always are on top of what's going on. That we like. 
want to get to settings quickly, you can see I just drop right down here. We can turn Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on and off, rotation lock control, notifications. We can make those quiet, our alarm. And if you go to settings, go back to all settings, you can see the icons and the whole look and feel are a little bit reminiscent of older BlackBerry. So it'll feel a little bit like, well, friendly and at home if you're used to an older BlackBerry device. You can control your network right there. You can set your notifications, sound, vibration. Notification alerts for all of these different things. Very nice that it's so granular. So if you don't want to be bothered by a million Twitter notifications at 11 o'clock at night, you don't have to be. For display right here, you can see we have our brightness set to max right now. You can change your font size. You can set the screen lock timeout. Gestures when locked, we'll show you what that means. And as you can see, there's no enable disable for the ambient light sensor. Pretty weird that. You can enter in your BlackBerry ID. We have BlackBerry Protect, which is one of those locate my device and remotely wipe my device in case I've lost control of it. The usual security and app permission thing, that, that we've seen that from older versions of BlackBerry. Media and sharing for HDMI. Storage information. You can set up your actual payment account for BlackBerry World and all that kind of stuff. For these over here, as we have more applications that we're going to show and load to you, you'll see them piling up here, and those move up and down. Up to eight of those can be going at a time. The phone runs on a very capable 1.5 gigahertz dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU with two gigs of RAM, so it can handle plenty of multitasking, and it feels pretty responsive. The only thing that feels a little slow is the actual UI, and that's the special effects that they're doing when you launch an application. It makes it look a little bit slower. Like, say I launch my videos app. It does this kind of little sideways thing. That actually wasn't too bad, but sometimes it, that looks a little sluggish, but it's just the, the animations that they've chosen to use. And we'll take a look at a 1080p trailer to see how it plays. Single speaker firing out from here. Beautiful, really beautiful looking display. And pretty good sound, as you heard. I mean, that's just nice looking. It's a real pleasure to look at this display. At 4.2 inches, it might seem smaller if you're used to one of those giant Android phones like the Galaxy Note 2 or the Samsung Galaxy S3. But compared to the iPhone 5, certainly it's just a little bit bigger than that, and you'll feel at home. And now for a size comparison, here we have it next to the iPhone 5. Boy, they look like they were separate at birth, don't they, from the front view, except we have that home button on the iPhone. So the BlackBerry is just a little bit taller, still very manageable by today's phone standards. It feels okay in the pocket. Doesn't feel too heavy, doesn't feel too light. They got the weight just right. It feels like a quality piece, but it's not like the Nokia Lumia 920, which feels like a little lead weight. And in terms of side thickness, you see there, they're both quite slim phones. And for the back view, of course, the iPhone uses a lot more metal on the back. Rim goes with plastic, so they can make that battery door easily removable. We won't complain. We like to be able to remove our battery and don't have to worry about wireless radio interference there. And on the front, the iPhone is a single sheet of glass, whereas the glass ends for the metal in the front over here. This is not Gorilla Glass, by the way, so a little extra protection top and bottom is not something we'll complain about. And here it is next to the Nokia Lumia 920, also on AT&T, 4.5-inch display on the Nokia. And you can see they're actually fairly close in size in terms of height. And Nokia is just a little bit taller, quite a bit wider. And they're both pretty thin phones, and Nokia conceals it well by being thinner in the top and the bottom there, so it looks a little thinner up top there, but by the time you get to the middle, well, not so much. In terms of wireless, you have NFC here, and they say that it'll work for mobile payments. We have Bluetooth 4.0, low energy, dual band Wi-Fi, Airs 11 BGN. Again, we have HSPA Plus and LTE 4G on AT&T here, and the the international edition that we got that, that's meant for Canada also works on AT&T's LTE network. And we have a GPS on board with assisted GPS. Another thing I really like about the BlackBerry Z10, and in the spirit, again, of the tradition of BlackBerry, of keeping you on top of things, if we turn it off and we open it to the unlock screen, which you can also do by swiping it. By the way, you can see I have notifications of my different email, Twitter notifications, alarms, all that kind of stuff right here so I know what's going on. Plus, if I press and hold on the camera button, you can launch the camera from right there. And again, you can also just do that. But you got to be careful of if you tend to keep your hands in your pocket where your phone is too, because you might be able to actually swipe it up. It should really take two swipes, one to wake it up. But I can pretty much manage to get it completely unlocked pretty quickly just like that.
You can disable the swiping, by the way, if you want to, on the BlackBerry. Icons look a lot, in terms of their style, like older BlackBerry OSs, so they're going to feel familiar too. They've been updated and modernized a little bit, but there's some continuity there. And we can see the work of the Astonishing Tribe in some of the more attractive applications, like the built-in calculator. Open calculator. Opening calculator. And there it is. That's about as pretty a calculator as you could hope to see, and a pretty decent set of functions there. And the compass is also very pretty. Nice looking 3D rotating compass. And obviously, yes, it has a digital compass in it. For your icon grid right here, you can press and hold and move these things around. Pretty much a common concept on most smartphones these days. And likewise, if you want to create a folder, just drag one icon on top of another and you can create folders. Pretty easy to go there. There is no make my grid alphabetical. I kind of wish there was, so I didn't have to tidy things up to find them, but hey. Docs to go is included since, well, BlackBerry Rim bought DataViz. They, they own that product now. You can create and edit Word and Excel documents, and you can edit and view PowerPoint documents, but you can't create new slide decks there. God bless you if you actually want to do something like create a PowerPoint presentation on a 4.2 inch display anyway, to be honest. But let's open up something here so we can check out the keyboard. Important for all you texters. Tap down here to edit. Oh, by the way, look at the sharing possibilities. There's all these things here. Now, if I had set up Facebook, that would be in here too. You know, it, it's just sharing is a dream here. Lots of options. But let's go back to our document editing. Tap on it, hit the edit button. It will open in edit mode and say I want to type something in there. And there's our on-screen keyboard. You can see right now I have the cursor right in front of the word prime and it's already suggesting time. The word prediction is pretty interesting here. And as you type in words, if you like what it's suggesting, you can just swipe up and it except the word that it has right there. It's a pretty useful keyboard to hear a faint little flop, 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 so you know what you're doing. Switch through all your symbols and your numbers, that kind of thing. Available as well. And in portrait mode, you've got some more room to type here. So a pretty nice keyboard and pretty decent word prediction. And if you need accented characters, press and hold. And you can see you can choose from a variety of accented characters, and it can support up to three languages at once, BlackBerry tells us. In addition to the contacts and calendars, we have something called Remember. That's actually Evernote integration, which is kind of neat. You can set up your Evernote account with this, and you have access to all of your Evernote documents in here, including things that are image-based. They'll, they'll show up as like image attachments that you have to tap on. But So here's something that I have that I attached an image to, a drawing that I had done. Tap on it, and then it opens up the drawing. So we have Evernote integration. We also have Story Maker for those of you who want to make your own little multimedia presentations using your camera and photos and videos. And I'm not too super excited about that, to be honest. And we have music and video applications, and these also will automatically pull content off your SD card, as you saw at the video player already. And we have a picture viewing application. And there's our music player. We don't have any album art for those, so you're just seeing generic pictures. It's a pretty nice sounding speaker, honestly. And there are some more options. And playlist creation, and you can look on BlackBerry App World, which is more than just apps. If we take a look at BlackBerry World, And we're doing this over AT&T's 4G LTE connection, by the way. You can see we got movies here, we have applications, top games, much nicer looking presentation that we saw on the playbook when it came out in terms of apps. Now the app story, that, that's the thing that hurts a bit there. You know, that's the problem with every new smartphone platform that comes out. There just aren't that many apps at first. No Netflix, for example. We don't know when that's going to come. But there's some other things like WhatsApp that people love that are on here. A lot of actually good quality games. We'll show you some of the selection of that in a minute. And then we've got movies you can rent and music that you can buy on here. Pretty decent selection. And prices for the movie rentals and purchase are about the same as you're going to find on other services. And that's in conjunction with Rovi 
as the partner for doing that and you can download to up to five devices if you do purchase something. And if you're hunting for something like games, you can see it's broken into categories. We'll take a look at action games first. Beach Buggy Blitz is here, Jetpack Joyride, The Bard's Tale is on here, Riptide GP. So a lot of pretty good games to start with. I'd say that's one of the strong points. Some of the apps that you're looking for might not be here yet, but you're pretty well covered with games. And how do games play? Very well. Very good game engine here. We're going to check out Beach Buggy Blitz to see how it does. And by the way, when I hit the volume controls there, you can see it brings back the last media I was playing, too. So we'll see how this plays. Again, beautiful screen. Really, the game looks nice and sharp, too. And as you see, it has good frame rates. Nice sound. And it controls pretty well right now. I'm just trying to face it at the camera, so I'm holding a little bit awkwardly. But it runs great. So gaming, go figure. Yeah, it's actually a, a strong point for BlackBerry Z10. If you're using this with BlackBerry Enterprise Server 10, by the way, you can set up BlackBerry Balance, and that means you can have work apps and stuff and home apps and stuff so you can segregate your content securely which is pretty nice too good business feature there generally speaking a secure and robust operating system i can see where businesses will be tempted to pick this device up on that for your mapping solution we have blackberry maps this is not a high point of the phone right now so here we have our blackberry maps this is a 2d view when you're driving you get a 3d view pretty basic not much going on here in the way of pois we can pinch, we can zoom. We have a My Places so you can have your favorite places saved up and you can navigate. We can press the dot to go back to our actual location. We have our My Places shortcut. And here we have Show Traffic, turn it on or off, and you get the usual green or red. You see green just appeared because, gosh, there's absolutely no traffic right now. And if you want to navigate to some place, you just type it in. Go for Walmart. and we can pick which Walmart we want to visit. And it'll give us information about the location, and if we hit go, it'll start navigating for us, speaking at all. So basic, not a whole lot of features here. We're wondering if AT&T Navigator is going to be available for this, and we reached out to AT&T and asked them, so read our full review to find out the answer to that. You do get AT&T Family Maps on here right now, and that's it for location-based stuff. Now, here's our camera application, and you can see we've got a little shortcut to our album over here, photos that we've taken. Right here is the set of settings, very fairly limited settings. Switching your camera between front and back, we have normal mode, we have image stabilization, and we have burst mode. For scene, we have action, whiteboard, night, beach or snow, or going back to auto, flash control, and aspect ratio, whether you want 4x3 or 16x9 widescreen. This can shoot 1080p video from the rear camera and 720p from the front 2 megapixel camera. And you can tap to shoot, and you can drag the focus box around if it hasn't picked the right thing to focus on. And if you tap this button here, you can switch between shooting still shots, video, or time shift. And time shift is going to do a series of shots basically to make sure that you've, if you've got a couple of people in the frame that all their faces are focused. It, a little hit or miss, that feature, but it's, well, it's interesting. And if we want to switch to video, just tap to start recording. Move the camera around. Look at the ducky in the front. Move it back. A little slow to focus there as we move it around. There we go. Now it's come back into focus. Let's take a look at that. It's nice and colorful and bright and sharp, but uh, the, the focus times when shooting video, as you can see, are a little bit iffy. And there's the sill shot that we took. So that's the camera. 
not bad, 8 megapixel camera. It's reasonably competitive, but it lacks all the features I'd like to see to compete with some of the Samsung Galaxy and HTC Android smartphones, to be honest. Not to mention the HDR feature that we have on the iPhone 5. Battery life has been quite good so far, insofar as it makes it through a full day on a charge with moderate to a little bit more than moderate use. Now, since this is running the latest software update from BlackBerry on this, this is the same as the update you had gotten on the Canadian version and the international version that improved battery life. With LTE on and active, we have had no trouble making it through the day. Now, if you're going to do something like use it for navigation for five hours straight, of course, you're going to want to swap in a spare battery or charge it. And it is nice to be able to take this battery out and put in a spare 1800 milliamp battery. In terms of calling, you can see we have a nice, very big, easy-to-use D-pad right here for calling, quick access to contacts, and to our call history as well. Call quality on this is excellent, very clear. No background noise, good noise control. Volume on the earpiece is about average. It's not particularly loud. It, it's not adequate if you're in a really loud, loud environment, big box store with lots of people. Then you might want to turn on speakerphone or use your headset, but... Uh, for moderately quiet to normal conditions, it's fine. And call recipients said we sound very loud and clear. And even we, when we were in a noisy location, they didn't hear the background noise. Data speeds are subjectively quite good on this. There really aren't any good speed tests yet available for BlackBerry 10. But I can tell you experientially that web pages load quite quickly over LTE's network. And applications download quickly as well. And speaking of that, we'll take a look at the web browser now. This is an HTML5 web browser. Again, it does support Adobe Flash. And we'll load our own website, Mobile Tech Review, here. Nice and quick. We do have great AT&T LTE coverage here. Pinch zooming we have. Menu for options. You can use Reader View. You can search on the page. Reload. Share with a myriad number of sharing options there. Add bookmarks. Edit the bookmarks. Site info. And for settings, You can see we can choose what our home page is, whether we want search suggestions, Adobe Flash, on or off. I do suggest using HTML5 video when you can because it is quicker and more responsive. Default text size. And if you want to get desktop view, that's actually under developer tools. Go figure. It's right over here. And speaking of HTML5 video playback, we're going to test out a video review here of our ASUS Mimo Pad 10 tablet. Let's see how that plays. And we're still doing this over LTE. We are not using Wi-Fi. This will automatically full screen. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the and it Asus looks and plays Pads great. Nice high quality. No blocky, nothing like that. Good sound. Reception on the phone on AT&T's LTE network has also been excellent, very good in terms of bars, reception, and call quality as well. So that's the BlackBerry Z10. Again, this is the AT&T version, virtually unchanged from the international version, going to be available on March 22nd for $199 with contract. A lovely phone. It's great to see BlackBerry come back with a very fresh operating system. A lot we like about the phone. Right now, the, the two things I would say are that the gestures are going to be a little bit difficult for people at first when they pick up the phone trying to figure out what to do with it, but I, I think most people will get the hang of it. Hey, if you're a long-term BlackBerry user, you're a smart person, aren't you? You'll probably figure it out. And the other is the basic lack of applications. Games are great, but beyond that, a little bit lackluster, but we'll see how quickly those pick up. So that's the BlackBerry Z10. It's going to be available on AT&T on March 22nd. Of course, the unlocked one's available now for a bit more money because you're not going to get that with a contract price, but still $199 on AT&T, five fifty dollars if you don't want to extend your contract with AT&T. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review of the BlackBerry Z10, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.